Hey, how did you like that? I thought I'd get a little close up of the, um, the mother, which is grown and it's bubbling. So I think we're ready to make bread. Well, we're going to get our dough ready and proving. Okay, so you've got your mother culture, your sourdough, smelling good. It's active. It's ready. So what we're going to do, this is my recipe. You can get any recipe, bread recipe you like and use your sourdough in that, but I'm going to do what I do. So a jug of flour. Oh, it's about four cups. How's that? About four cups. That's what I usually do. You might get a couple of little loaves out of this or one big one. Um, right, dry stuff. I do put in salt. Some people don't, um, but I put in salt now. Some people put it in after it's risen because it might affect the yeasts. I've never had that problem, so I don't know. Put in salt as much as you want, as little as you want, or none at all. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of linseed meal just to um I usually do I usually put in something into my flour like to make it a bit more interesting like sesame seeds or poppy seeds pepitas sunflower seeds is nice actually really nice yeah I'm just gonna keep this one sort of simple bit of that um, olive oil I like to put in olive oil it sort of tends to not soften the loaf, but it just makes it um, more pliable as well when you're kneading it. Okay, the culture. So I'm going to put in a good, yeah, you know, you're supposed to measure this as well, but I think it's about 200 mils, grams, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, um, put in some. Now don't forget, you'll need to replace that. So if you are gonna keep this in your fridge, you, like you don't wanna use it for a while, put it in your fridge and everything becomes inactive, but it's still in there, the yeast is still there. So if it was in your fridge and you say you wanted to make bread from it, um, I would spoon out that amount, put it into a little, a bowl or another jar and keep that out or you keep this one, put that one back in the fridge, right? So you've got one that's out and getting active. So you're gonna use it maybe the next day. Um, and this one just stays in your fridge, okay? But you'll still need to replenish this with the water and the flour. Okay, so now we've gone back in. We've got our sourdough mother in there. And now we just add some water. Um, don't put in hot water over 29 degrees I think it is will kill the yeast so nothing's going to happen your bread won't rise your dough won't rise raise up um, put in about a cup of flour and just see how that goes of course it's going to change it's different flowers take up different amounts of moisture you'll find that even between brands you know um, you know plain white flour from one shop will be slightly different to plain white flour from another shop. Um, okay, I'm actually using self-raising flour right now. Didn't for the yeast, for the mother. Okay, and then when it starts coming together, can you see? I have to stand up. Hi Queen! <laughs> He's hiding. <laughs> All right, I've got a slightly different angle so I could knead this in front of you. Hang on, I need a bit more room. Go back. All right, hello Lolly, have you been down the beach? All right, and then we're going to get stuck into it. So yes, and then bring it together. This is the best bit. 
This is the best bit. You know how I said I liked making bread. There's something in this very old practice, you know, that we've been doing for a very long time as humans. Um, I don't know. There must be something psychological to it or from your past lives or something going, yeah, make bread, you know. I just love it. I just love the feeling it gives you when you're, when you're kneading bread. Now, I'd, I got a big bowl like this. I just do it in here, you know. You can turn it out onto your bench, do a board to do the kneading, of course, but I've got... I got such a big ball. I'm gonna, uh, you know, it works in here. It's good. And you need a way for, you know, as long as you want. Some people don't need it at all. They just put it together, form it into a bowl and leave it. You can do it that way too, you know. I like to knead. <laughs> Hello, Quinn. Um, so, you know, usually about, you could go on for five, ten minutes and the dough ends up feeling really nice. Look at this. Good. And as you make more bread, you'll get used to how much is supposed to go in there, like the quantities of your flour versus water. Just becomes a natural thing, instinct, yeah? You'll know, you'll know. Okay, so let's pretend I've just gone on for 10 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I have. <laughs> Time flies. And you then put it into a clean bowl, which this is. Just drizzle some olive oil or vegetable oil over the top. We did this the other day with flatbread. Roll it around in the oil. And that's just to keep it, the top layer from drying out. Um, you don't want it to form a crust. Now, cover it with um, something um, and let it prove, rise up overnight. It's gr good to make your dough 24 hours before you're going to bake it, okay? At least. Um, it really helps. Your bread's going to be better for it. Just leave it alone. Um, and then, so this is going to continue tomorrow. So we'll see how it looks. Look, that's the size of mine now. About the size of my hand, yep. And we'll see how it looks tomorrow. I hope yours is working. So exciting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, um, stay tuned. I think this afternoon I'm gonna do um, some pickled onion. Just a little, little jar of pickled onions. Swainos pickled onions, yes. So uh, let's come back and do that. And then I've got something very exciting in the pipeline I've had for a long time. We've, we're gonna, uh, I'll tell you about it later. Okay, over and out. Happy raisin.